Warning, graphic images of violence and death. Please use discretion. Mount Darwin is a place of great historical significance. It is located at the center of Mashona Land Central. Mount Darwin is located 155 kilometers from Zimbabwe's capital, Harare. Mount Darwin is well known for its high temperatures and arid conditions. It also has desert-like features. However, the story of Mount Darwin goes beyond these environmental calamities. As Midland State University for one media and society studies students, we travel to Mount Darwin to explore more about the area. The legends of war, mass graves, concerns of war veterans, and what the government has done to solve these problems. What we find in Mount Darwin is absolutely astonishing. With just the way those people were walking, if there were smooth soldiers, war would have begun. She was forced into the wall where she died cuddling her child. I saw corpses being exhumed, coming out with their fresh clothes on. The story of fresh blood is biased. The spirit mediums could allocate the body parts to their respective bodies. If someone dies a disgruntled death, their souls do not rest in peace, but try to communicate to the living. Take away their peace, or rather, let them die. We are now at the airstrip base where the whites used to settle. They would take the blacks from local village and lock them up in concentration camps, abusing them, treating them as slaves. This is the location of the monitoring camp. It is also where our heroes' corpses were disposed illegally. There was again a torture camp for the investigation of the blacks. This is where the captured comrades were taken to. The rest of the community was called upon to witness their comrades' corpses, and it made the local community despise war. At this place, fallen heroes, thousands of souls have perished. And now, having caught up with comrade Kangundu, we have asked him one question. What is the significance of this place to the people of Mount Dari? His answer was simple. There are too many souls which have been lost. So, they cannot let go. So what is the implication of this? We have mass graves where most people perished and the people have got a sentimental attachment to this place. It is detrimental to us that every hero be buried according to the black culture where each corpse is supposed to have an individual grave. Now, we are going to the mass graves that were created by the white settlers for black people during the liberation struggle. In order to be allowed access to the mass graves, we had to communicate with the fallen heroes. Comrade Jotam Gumbez leads the communication before telling us what happened to the comrades in the mass graves. 
Those who have heard the song before, join in. Those who haven't, just hum along. This is the area where the murdered heroes were disposed. Most were killed through torture in their camps. And were disposed like dogs. After finishing the S trip mass grave business, we are getting into the homes of the people who reside near the mass graves. It only takes a minute to reach the first homestead. I'm at the place of one of the residents who are going to give us more information on the mass graves. And according to them, they are saying that the people who are dead should be removed and taken to another place so that they could live in peace. This is Regina Chinoda. She is one of the residents who spills out her desire for the inhabitants of mass graves to be exhumed and get a proper reburial. We are not pleased because we hope for these heroes to be buried at their respective relatives' homesteads. Our being here is just because we need somewhere to reside. Regina has raised a pertinent issue of exhumation of the dead at the airstrip. The question is, what has the government done so far? For now, the government has not taken any action, not knowing if anything at all is going to be done. Because from the time we started residing here, nothing at all has been done. However, Comrade Gumbezi, a member of the Fallen Heroes Trust, has revealed that there are plans to fence the mass graves. We plan to erect significant structures on this area so as to acknowledge and honor the families buried here. People should not find it difficult to locate this area. So we we'll plant signs that give directions and boundaries. This is only a fraction of a long, complicated, breathtaking and horrific story of the wailing bones of Mount Darwin. We will now take this up to Chibondo. Chibondo is a place where the Smith regime committed massive inhuman atrocities on the blacks. Many people came to know what really happened in Chibondo. <laughs> but the question is... <laughs> today, Again, we communicate with the dead. Oh, you are 
Sita Kufiran Bawe Kusa Sita Basara Daka Siwa Kusa Sita Basara Daka Siwa Mumakumu Emunzi Sita Sharara Zimbabwe, Rufuango, Rujava, Zimbabwe, Rufuango, Comrade Gumbez's temper shoots to the rooftops all of a sudden. What might be the problem now? With all due respect, my brothers, sisters, parents, and all those who are here, excuse me, all the spirits who are present at this place. My superiors, all these people you see here today, they are here to learn. Are your children from Midland State University? Even though you are dead, you already know this. They are here to learn about the history of this country. May you penetrate into their mind and reveal the truth to them. They are the future leaders of Zimbabwe. May you penetrate into their mind and reveal the truth to them. They are the future leaders of Zimbabwe. Help them to understand their history and preserve their national heritage. This academic trip was organized by Comrade George Rutani. You know it. I am representing him today in his absence. We did not want to surprise you with our presence. That is why we seek for your permission. I am Comrade Gumbeze, Comrade Teddy Zulu. You know me. I was here before. You know why you have not yet been exhumed, let alone receive a proper burial. Penetrate into their minds. Penetrate into the minds of our leaders. Every one of them, wherever they are, remind them of the fallen heroes who need to be exhumed. I plead with you to take away the peace of all those 
arrogant leaders, those who do not want to hear about exhumation. You may kill them or alternatively make them wrong, telling everyone that they are fallen heroes that need to be exhumed. Let the children that are here also go back and testify about what they have seen here at the mass graves. Penetrate into their minds. We visited Chibonda Shopping Center to hear the narratives of what happened during the exhumation process. I've witnessed corpses being dug out a couple of times. Some came out fresh as they were from death with their clothes on. I've seen a corpse of a mother with a child clad on her back. Another corpse without a hand and it's suspected that it was a result of a bumping. I've seen a boy come out of this catapult who the spirit mediums alleged to have been heading cattle when he faced death. Then another time when the graves were being dug as a war veteran's wife, I was present. I even stepped onto the graves and witnessed seven corpses being buried before going home. Another burial day, I was late, but I witnessed the corpses covered in white cloths bought by the government. And there was fresh blood oozing out. Strange. One man says the experiences are being blown out of proportion. The narration involving the oozing of flesh blood is a lie. Reality is that the people who were killed during the Smith regime, precisely during war, were buried deep underground so their flesh could not rot. The corpses on the shallow part were only born, but those who were in the deep end of the borehole where there is no air and cool water came out with their flesh, but there was no blood. The people of Mount Darwin are appealing to the government that they erect proper fences around the area. They asked for full protection of the area. From a personal point of view, the government should make this area a hero's acre and the corpses be buried like any other heroes, then call it Chibondo Hero's Acre. We are expecting the government to intervene so that we extract our heroes and bury them properly. Only one man, George Rutanira, who has been active in the exhumation process, appreciates what the Zimbabwean government has done so far. I would like to give a nod and acknowledgement of the government's efforts in the exhumation programs despite the financial challenges. We also acknowledge the police and the army for monitoring and partaking in the exhumation proceedings. These look for traps at the locations.
and they also make sure that the process is through legal boundaries. We then lawfully take the exhumed bodies. And facilitate a proper reburial for them. In Zimbabwe, God made it so that if a person dies with grievances, their souls do not rest in peace. Rather, they communicate with the living, giving them information that sometimes even the state security may not know. The dead manifest through their relatives and sometimes through strangers. For us, we spiritually urge the fallen heroes to communicate with their living relatives. Then the living relatives look for us and we help them look for their lost son or daughter. The fallen hero might fail to direct us to where he is because of some spiritual reasons. With my team, we can push the spirits away. This helps the fallen comrade to direct us to exactly where he is. If he or she continues to get lost in the spiritual realm, we help him to direct us through our spiritual prowess. When we get to the place where he or she has directed us, we let them communicate with their relative. If the deceased and their relative agree that he is the one at that location, we then approach the appropriate officers to ask for permission to exhume the fallen heroes. We finally seek approval from the police and government to exhume the bodies. After we finish the exhumation process, the relatives of the comrades will never ever have problems associated to the ones they had before. We have brought forth most of the unknown truths about the mass graves in Mount Darwin. I would like to say this might be the end of a journey here in Mount Darwin where secrets have been unveiled, truths about the mass graves, truths about the liberation struggle, but this is not the end of the story. These are the wailing bones of Mount Darwin. <laughs>